we are making babies we are making human beings guys welcome to my podcast you know i decided to carve a niche for myself within the channel so i'll be doing this podcast maybe once a week two times a week <laughs> i've not yet decided on the frequency but i just want to give a voice to some of the untold stories around us on um, maternal and reproductive health on parenting pregnancy childbearing and everything revolving around women's health this is going to be the podcast that you would want to look forward to every week because we'll be talking about deep maternal issues that we don't get to hear every day in our society and in our regular lives so stick around while we roll on this first episode once a woman gets pregnant in my opinion she should be put on a paycheck i mean she should do nothing she should just stay at home nurse the baby in her womb till she brings out the baby because that nine months of gestation is so much work i know there are organizations out there who pay uh they are pregnant uh staff of course this happens when the woman gives birth you know, it's about to give birth and she has to take a, a leave, a three months leave from work. So during the three months, she doesn't have to go to the office or to work. So she stays home to nurse her child. And when she returns to work, she receives um, a, a payment for the time that she was off work nursing her baby. It's called paid leave. So she received this payment as, you know, part of the compensation for the hours that she spent away from work, you know, but I think, you see that nine months gestation period, I think that throughout those nine months, a woman deserves payment. Because what women go through, through those nine months, I mean, it's, it's indescribable sometimes. Some women die in the process. Some never make it till the, till, till the ninth month. Some never make it to the day day to bring forth their babies. Some women even, you know, die on the delivery bed, on that table when they are pushing out their, their tiny little lovely humans. Some don't even come out of it alive. It's a lot of work that women put in to nurse, to grow this human beings inside of them for nine months. There's a lot of changes that goes on in a woman's body, mentally, physically, you know, spiritually, a lot happens to her. And I deserve, I, I think that she deserves all the support financially, materially, physically, all the support that she can get. More so, she deserves to not work, just stay if she wants to work that should be her choice the reason why i'm doing this particular episode of my podcast is to make you understand that pregnancy the pregnancy experience is different for every woman it doesn't treat every woman the same way okay the way the pregnancy hormones will affect woman a are totally different or it's totally different from the way it will affect pregnant woman b so some time ago, I came across a post on Facebook where this man was all out appreciating his wife, you know, throwing praises. I'm not saying that it is wrong to appreciate your wife or to throw praises at her. Apparently the woman was pregnant, so he took to Facebook, he was like, is it Twitter or Facebook something like that, but I know there was on social media. Oh, I thought pregnant women are so lazy, you know, some, some of you pregnant women are just so lazy, sleeping around all day, doing nothing. Look at my wife, she's so hardworking, she doesn't let the pregnancy get at her, she's up and about doing work, doing chores. I mean, this woman baffles me, she's so, so strong. And I was like, wow, wow, nice, nice for you. She's strong. I had, I went to the comment section and so many people were like, oh, that's good. Some women are just lazy. Most of the men were badging at some pregnant women. Of course, there are pregnant women who are just outrightly lazy, you just sleep around and do nothing. But let me tell you something. Pregnancy is different for every woman. You don't know what they go through, how it's affecting them or how it's making them feel. Let me tell you a short story. When I got pregnant for our first child, our son, it was a smooth pregnancy. I had, I mean, there was no iota of sickness, not even malaria, not a headache, no morning sickness. Even morning sickness that's so rampant during pregnancy, I had nothing, like nothing. The only thing that showed that I was pregnant was that my stomach was growing, my face, my facial features were changing and I was putting on weight and all of that. 
But when I got pregnant again for a second child, my God, morning sickness almost took my head away. <laughs> so much that the first three months of that pregnancy, I kept contemplating termination because I was, I was suffering from severe morning sickness. I had severe morning sickness to the point where my ribs were hurting me all the time from throwing up. People were sleeping, I was in the bathroom throwing up every minute. When I wake up in the morning, even if I've not eaten, I will throw up. If I brush, I throw up. If I drink water, I throw up. If I sneeze, I throw up. If I even take a slice of fruit, I will throw up. So I was so restless. My entire life during that season was just so painful. So much that I was I was always crying. I would be crying because I was in pain. Do you know what it means to be throwing up at least seven times a day? And not just any kind of throwing up. Like heavy, heavy vomiting. Even when you've not eaten anything, you throw up like until all your intestines are about to come out. And that's a feeling that gives you. Until you throw up, you will not be comfortable. So it made me so always so tired, so sleepy. I was feeling so lazy. I didn't have strength to do anything. But another person would think that I'm just being lazy or I'm just pretending or I know, is this pregnancy a new thing? But it affects women differently. And like I mentioned, my first pregnancy wasn't so. It was kinder to me. But the second, no, it wasn't kind until the first trimester passed. And even into the second trimester, it kept threatening you know, to continue the morning sickness. But this is just to tell us that women are affected differently. And I'm so happy because there are some two women who are going to share their experiences. They would have two babies. They've been moms of two, you know, moms, two time moms rather. They've been two time moms and they opted to share their experiences. And I want you to listen to it before we continue. Hello, my name is Mrs. Ngumraiza. I'm a mother of two beautiful girls, one aged a year and seven months, and the other two months, three weeks. I would describe my first experience to be overwhelming and quite difficult for me, especially during my first trimester, where my body and whole system had to adapt to a whole lot of hormonal and physical changes. But along the line, it got exciting, knowing I was having a tiny human growing inside of me. The support from friends and family also made it easier for me. Thus, I enjoyed it till the last day. Meanwhile, my second was very challenging and way difficult for me since my first. It's just about seven months and I was still breastfeeding at that time. Also, I could not get much rest as I desired and handling my first trimester was difficult. My second came with so many ch changes and challenges I, I, I didn't experience in my first. Thus, my journey seemed like a total new one because there was, uh, I was vomiting a lot. I was drinking cold water. I mean, cold water. I was peeing a lot, like sometimes at least eight times at night. So I could not even sleep like straight four hours. I don't have straight sleep. I was having lower abdominal pains. I had difficulties in bending a lot. My tummy was way bigger than the first one. And I had painful ties. I couldn't lift my legs up. And sometimes sitting in some desirable positions was not even easy. You see, it was just uncomfortable. Even sleeping on, on my bed was kind of tough because I had to put pillows here and there. But at the end of the day, we thank God because he ended in praise. I had all my two kids normally without any tears. And I'm so grateful that God favored me. Well, my advice for any woman or any mother out there would be for them just to just hang in there. The journey is it's, you cannot even predict because like we normally say every child comes with their own challenges their own differences like what you experience another person might not experience or they might have a totally different thing that they, they, they come across that you didn't so whatever 
challenge or whatever difficulty that you you come across during or after your pregnancy just don't give up just keep pushing and 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 i hope that you have support from family from friends most importantly from god because sometimes it dawns on you a lot it dawns on us mothers a lot because we get down emotionally and sometimes we don't even we don't even think of how to handle it spiritually but we thank god that in recent times there are so many teachings there are so many things out there that are opening our eyes to see that this is specifically what we have to do to tackle this situation hello my name is mrs jenge kenry i'm a mother of two a boy and a girl I'm here to talk about my pregnancy experience. My pregnancy experience with my first baby was an awesome journey. I had little or no changes during my first pregnancy. The only problem I had was appetite loss during the first months of my pregnancy. So my first trimester was all the problem. My second pregnancy was a whole lot of mess for me. I had sight problem i had blur vision which was caused by the pregnancy i had a back ache my back was paining from my my neck right down to my back they said it was nerves caused by the pregnancy i also had appetite loss during that period i was not eating nothing could enter my mouth i could eat just pineapples and watermelon also I had a malaria, consistent malaria. Yes, I was on drugs, but I, I was on my hand malaria for the first month, which drained me so much so that I had blood shortage and I had to ha take a lot of blood donations during that period. This journey was not good for me at all. I thought of taking, getting rid of the pregnancy even, but the Lord helped me and I kept my baby. It was not an easy journey for me and my husband, but one thing that kept us was our support, our consistent support. Now to the, to the women out there and to the caregivers and to everybody who has fear about first and second babies, I'll tell you to dare it, to go in for your children. It's not always the same experience. It will never be the same experience because the children don't have the same hormones. I want you to dare it. And if you see that it's not going, pray that God helps you. That's one thing that really works. Prayers work at all times. Pray that the Lord will help you. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will give you grace to go through it. The Lord will recondition your, your, your hormones. Also, to spouses in particular, please support your wives. Support them during this period, especially when they are having a contrary pregnancy experience from what they had before, especially when it's bad. Encourage them, speak to them, still tell them you look beautiful, still tell them, hey, you're strong. It's not an easy journey for them. Encourage them, stand by them during that period. You could hear that for yourself. Women go through a lot during pregnancy and each woman has her own experience. So you cannot use one woman's experience to judge, condemn or praise another woman. Okay, like for my second pregnancy, I lost so much weight. Until one night when my husband returned from work and he brought some groceries, I was taking them to the kitchen and he was following me from behind and he said, babe, you look so flat. Your Botox is all gone. I mean, I had put on so much weight after my first baby, but I lost all of that flesh when I took in again because I was constantly throwing up. I could not keep anything down, not even water, not liquid, nothing. And if I must drink water, it must be dead cold, like icy, dead cold. If not, I would not be able to gulp it or swallow it. I was always having a headache from vomiting and crying because I was like, God, what is this? Is, will I be able to carry this till nine months? But God has given women the strength to cope. So from these women's experiences, you can tell that 
if 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 maybe if during one's uh pregnancy days you see her sleeping not wanting to work you know just lazing about do not conclude that she's just been a lazy pregnant woman find out what could be happening maybe she's going through something maybe she's suffering from severe morning sickness maybe she has a stitched uh, cervix some women even get their cervixes stitched throughout their pregnancy because they if not their babies will come out so women go through a lot and they need our support all the support they can get that is why i advocate that women should not work when they are pregnant they need to stay home if you want to work it's your choice that needs to stay home that season of your life is to nurture to bring out life do you know what it means to to be the major contributor to human life major of course i'm not saying she's the only one that contributes men of course contribute but she is a major person during pregnancy sometimes some women cannot just work because the nature of their pregnancy does not permit them to work I remember when I was pregnant, my second pregnancy, you know, during those days of severe morning sickness, I was hired for an MC job, you know. You know, the morning sickness had not so much kicked in severely. It was still, you know, warming up, but I was having the morning sickness anyway, regular vomiting, but it wasn't yet so severe. So I was hired for an MC job. I was all confident that I'll be fine and I'm going to deliver that job despite my pregnancy. My, my, my uh, stomach had started showing. So I took the job anyway, flyers were out, you know, I had posted, the event organizers had shared their posters, prepared, you know, pre-event communication and my flyers were everywhere. I'd even invited some people for the event and so many people were looking forward to seeing me there. I was equally looking forward to being there because I missed, you know, emceeing. So I really wanted to go there. But two days to the event, I took ill severely and I was admitted at, to the hospital. I remember sending a text message to the event organizer telling her, I'm sorry, please. You would have to look for a replacement. I can't even help you find a replacement, but there is, I have an emergency. You know, I need to attend to my health and I'm currently admitted to the hospital. And she was so kind. She said, it's fine, your health before anything. It could have been any of us who were organizing the event. And that's how I missed that job. I missed the money. I couldn't go. But somebody who does not understand might just say, ah, not just lazy woman. You know, if you walk, you know, if you do nothing, because you don't carry belay checks, if you just belay now, it's now no matter, you know, you go past. But we have to be empathetic. We need to show sympathy, empathy to women when they're pregnant because they go through diverse tribulations during this pregnancy. Some women cannot even move. I know of a, a friend whom throughout her three pregnancies, she had her cervix stitched and she could not move. She was put on strict bed rest. So she had to hold all her activities stay at home, just lay down on the bed or on the couch. No, no moving, no gesticulations because the least thing, her cervix can just break open and she might lose her baby. So that kind of a woman, do you think that she should go out there, you know, work, bulldoze, trying to show to the world that, you know, pregnant women are strong, you know, she can work even during pregnancy because she wants to show that she's not lazy? No, women have nothing to prove. Pregnant women have nothing to prove. Being pregnant, carrying a human being, making human beings, you know, in you, carrying them for nine months, is already enough work. So they do not have to do extra work to prove anything to anyone or to the world for them to be seen as strong, powerful women. No, if it's not going, sleep. If you wake up in the morning, during pregnancy and you feel like you can't do anything your body isn't giving you that energy that you need to go about and work dear woman please sleep just sit down put up your your, your legs on, on on maybe on a stool in a bowl of water relax the world will not end because even if you go ahead in that pregnancy and do all the cleaning and do all the work and go to the office and show that you're the best employee if they have to drop you someday at that workplace, they will drop you without second thought. So think about your health, the human being that you're making, that you're about to bring to the world. 
first. So what is my take home for you is that when you see a pregnant woman, whether at home, at work, on the streets, be kind to them, be patient with them. If you have a pregnant friend, a pregnant spouse, give them a helping hand. There comes a time when a pregnant woman cannot stoop, cannot, you know, she cannot prostrate, she cannot bend to a certain level because her, her stomach does not permit her. So you don't expect her to go stripping, cleaning the house. Show her kindness. This particular episode is a call for everybody to be kind to pregnant women because we are making babies. We are making human beings. Come on. And it's so much of a task. And of course, there are other babies that come with so much strength. You cannot just see it. You just want to work. If you have the strength, go ahead and do it. But when you go visiting a pregnant woman, please, if you meet dirty laundry, dirty dishes, and you're a close friend or relation, help her. Give her a helping hand. Show empathy. Ask her if you can bring her groceries. Call, ask if you can bring her anything that she needs. Offer her a massage, <laughs> a fit massage for that. They need that. Yeah. So basically that's it for this episode of my podcast. Thank you for watching. Drop a comment section. If you know a pregnant woman after this video, go show her kindness, call her, buy her some ice cream, buy her some fruits, offer her a gift and just even a prayer, say a prayer for her because listen, carrying a baby for nine months, giving birth, we're going to talk about this maybe on another episode, but a safe pregnancy and a safe delivery is underrated. Please, if you see a pregnant woman, if you cannot do any other thing, do not badmouth her. If you cannot do any other thing, pray for her. Pray that God grants her a safe, healthy baby and a safe delivery. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and tell me the kind of things that you equally want me to talk about on this podcast on maternal, reproductive health, childbearing, parenting, you know, you can suggest some topics to me and I'll be glad to, you know, bring in my opinion. And of course, I'll be coming here once in a while with other people to share their perspective. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>